I'm Richard, and I'm here to show you how to use Catalog Custom Attributes in the Square API. Custom Attributes are a great way to store additional data on a seller's catalog items and item variations specific to your app. For example, you might have a food delivery app that needs to track what catalog items should be deliverable. Or you might have an online marketplace that needs to track prep time for an order. Or whether something can't be sold online. Let's start by taking a look at types of custom attributes you can create for each of these apps. First, let's take a look at a food delivery app. I've already created an attribute for each of the four different custom attribute types, Boolean, string, number, and selection. Let's show what those look like in the UI by going to items and then click on an item. The first thing a buyer might do in the food delivery app is filter based on dietary preferences. So for this, we created a selection attribute called dietary category. It is a single selection with the options of meat, vegan, and vegetarian. Next, the buyer in the food delivery app might want to hide things they are allergic to. So we have another selection attribute that is a multi-selection called allergens. This lets the seller select which allergens an item has, so a buyer can filter these when choosing what to order. Since the catalog is what the seller uses in their point of sale, there might not always be a description of items that are buyer friendly. For this, we put in a string attribute called delivery description, so the seller can write something for the buyer to read about this item. Now, we know sellers might want to have different prices in our food delivery app, so we have created a number attribute here called price override to let us know what price they want to set in our app. Finally, our food delivery app needs to know which items should or shouldn't display. This is why we created the allow delivery boolean attribute. This lets a seller indicate if an item should be available in the delivery app or not. Great. So we've covered the four different types of attributes in the context of a food delivery app and how an app would use those custom attributes to track specific things on each item. Let's go through these attribute types again, but this time looking at how an online marketplace app might use them. Our online marketplace app has specific categories for finding items. These might not be the same types of categories that a seller is using, and we don't want to modify the seller's categories in their catalog. This is why we created a single selection attribute that has outdoor, household, kitchen, and bedroom. Then, our online marketplace app displays if there are any special shipping requirements for certain items. For this, we created a multi-select attribute called shipping requirements, which has require signature, bulky, and international restricted. The next thing we need to track on items is how long it might take to prepare the item for shipping. For this, we created a number attribute called days to prepare. Our online marketplace app also allows the seller to display special return policies on a per item basis. So we created a string attribute, return override, that allows them to say if there's a different return policy for this item. Finally, our app has a special warning it displays for items that are not returnable, which we created a Boolean attribute for named allow returns. We've covered how different apps would use custom attributes to track things specific to their app. So now, let's cover how you can create each of these attributes using the API and what options you have when defining them. Before we do, it's important to point out that you should not be storing any kind of personally identifiable information using custom attributes. For more guidance on collecting customer information using Square APIs, be sure to check our guide on best practices for collecting information in our docs. To create custom attributes, we'll need to use the Catalog API, so let's select that here. Then, let's pick the Upsert Catalog object, which allows us to create new catalog objects or update existing ones. The first thing we should always do is generate an item potency key. Next, since we're creating a new catalog object, we can put anything as our temporary reference ID. Now, we can set the type of object we want to create in the type field, which is custom attribute definition. Since we are defining a custom attribute, we'll fill out the custom attribute definition data. The first thing we need to specify is what objects do we want our custom attribute to be associated with. We currently support only item, item variation, or both. We're just going to select item. Then, we have to specify the display name of the field, which is what shows up in the UI for a seller, so we should be sure this is clear and understandable. I'm going to name this field Magical Properties for our Magic Relics Marketplace. For the type field, I'm going to choose Selection. This process is basically the same for other types, but we're covering the most complex case here with a multi-select attribute. Now, with the App Visibility field, we can specify whether this field should only be visible to my app, readable by other apps, or readable and writable by other apps. I'm going to pick App Visibility Hidden. 
Next is the description, which is something that may be displayed to the seller in the UI. You can use this to clarify constraints on your custom attribute or how a seller can best use it. Now we have to set our key. This is what is used to access this field through the API, so it is required to be unique. This field cannot be updated after you create your custom attribute definition, so be careful how you set this field. We can now configure our selection attribute by filling out the selection config field. Before we start adding selections, let's set how many we want to allow. If we wanted this to be a single selection field, we would just set this to one, but we're going to create a multi-select field, so we'll set this to five. You can set up to 100 selections. Now we can start adding some options. I'm going to add earth, fire, wind, water, and heart. Finally, we should specify whether we want this custom attribute to be visible to sellers. The seller visibility field is what controls whether or not to display UI in the seller dashboard that allows them to read or write values to the attribute fields we're creating. I want sellers to pick the right magical properties, so I'll set it to seller visibility read write values. We can now run our request, and great, it was successful. Let's go to our seller sandbox dashboard to verify that we can see this new field on our items. We can navigate to our items and just click on one of them. If we scroll down, we can see there's a new field here for magical properties. Let's go ahead and pick some attributes and save the item. Now our seller can select the magical properties that our app needs to track for each item. Let's quickly take a look at what our custom attributes look like in the API. We can just search catalog objects, filter for items, and also include related objects. And here, we can see our item with the custom attributes on it. That should cover how you can create custom attributes for catalog items and make it easier for your app to work with a seller's catalog. Each app can store up to 10 seller visible attributes and 10 app only attributes per item or item variation. Be sure to check our docs for some example walkthroughs on custom attributes. Happy coding.